Today we're going to be reading Harold and the Purple Grand by Crockett Johnson. This was one of my favorite books um, growing up and I hope you like it too. One evening, after thinking, thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight. And he needed something to walk on. So if he needed a moon, what did he do so he could have a moon? He used his crayon to draw it. Maybe that's why it's called Harold and the Purple Crayon. Maybe. And he needed something to walk on. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost. And he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across a field and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest, forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be, would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It's kind of a scary dragon. It even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. What's happening? What do you think is going to happen? Because his hand is shaking. You see. Suddenly, he realized what was happening. But by then, Harold was over his head in an ocean. Because his hand was shaking, it made little waves like an ocean. Has. He came up thinking fast. And in no time, he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie. But there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. Let's see, count all the pies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine pies. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. Oh, what do you think he's making? So, Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. 
Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his bedroom. Up the mountain he goes. He was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. And there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. Now what do you think is going to happen to Harold? Do you think he's going to be all right? What do you predict? Let's see what's going But luckily, he kept his wits. That means he's using his brain and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. Phew, I think he's gonna be okay. And he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows, and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. Just trying to think. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Oh. Then suddenly, Harold remembered. What do you think he remembered? I wonder. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it and he drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor, and Harold dropped off to sleep. The end. I made my own story kind of like Harold and the purple crayon story, except mine is called Miss Kaylee's Purple Pencil, and I wrote the date I made it. It's April 10th, 2020, so I wrote four 10, 20, because four means April, 10 is the number day it is in April, and 20 is the year it is, 2020. Miss Kaylee's purple pencil. I'm going to go through it one time, and we're just going to look at the pictures, try to think what the story could be about, and then I'll tell you the story. about. Hmm. See if you were right. I'm going to tell you the story this time. 
Miss Kaylee's Purple Pencil, made on April 10th, 2020. There was a virus called the coronavirus, and it was making people sick. So, everyone had to stay on their houses so they wouldn't get each other sick. And they did their school on their computer. One day, while I was at my house, I was missing all of my preschool friends. So, I had an idea. Light bulbs sometimes represent ideas like a light bulb that went off with light. It's kind of like when our brain comes up with something, comes up with an idea. That's what this means. My idea was I could wish my preschoolers well. Mm -hmm. I wish you well, everyone. The end. So that was my story. I used a purple pencil because I did not have a crayon. You can use, you can make your own story like this. I'm going to post on Seesaw um, how to make this, uh, make a little book kind of like this and your parents can help you make it. You fold it and then you, there's a part that you cut. Um, so your job now is to make your own story, have your parent help you make the little booklet, and then write your name on the front and the date. You can have your parent help you write the date. And then draw pictures of what's going on in your life right now. It's kind of like a picture journal. Because this is an interesting time that we're living in. Uh, and if we draw pictures and make um, a book out of what we're experiencing, what we're doing, it can help us remember later on what it was like to live in this time. So draw pictures of what you've been doing and what life has been like for you during this time when everyone's at their house. And then you can have your parent help write words about what the pictures mean. You can share your book with your family. I hope you guys have fun making, the, making a book like this. I love you guys. Miss you. Bye.